And Mr. Basil Chapman, as we do each and every Tuesday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Basil does an outstanding show here every trading day, 10 to 11 Eastern Standard Time. Also has a great newsletter, the opening call. Now, it's very easy to get Basil's newsletter, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to go into newsletters. You're going to see it right on the right-hand side, the second one down. You can get Basil's newsletter for one month for $149. You can get it for six months for $695, which is a savings of $199 or 22%. And you can get it for one year for $1,195, which is a savings of $593 or 33%. Now, they all come, folks, with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So you can come out here. You can get the letter. If the letter works for you, great. You keep it. If it for some reason it doesn't work for you, you get your money back. What you also get is Basil has approximately 12 amazing archives out there. So you're going to get an education and a half for the month that you have this letter. And you've got lots of work ahead of you. Basil Chapman, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you? End of the month. Finish End of the first. month Here again. Again. I mean, wait, yeah. listen, March 17th is only, what, 45 days away. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So, yeah. I know. Um, so this is very interesting. I got a little bit of a sell-off here. Uh, actually, I just sent the den a note to say that in my uh, shorter-term charts, we just made a we made a peak F in the in the one-minute chart and a peak F in the ten-minute chart. So uh, we'll see how the I, I mentioned the four thousand and sixty-four level in the E-mini is really key support, and that's about where we are. So it's very interesting because this market's kind of formulating. There are patterns that it's repeating over and over. And I'll just show this to uh, those of you who are new to my work. I like to identify the lowest bar uh, and see if we can get a starting uh, position and count each successively higher peak. At the fourth highest peak, I alphabetize in peak A. The next higher peak is B, and the next is C, and the next is D. You can go all the way to E, F, and G. But D is where other things can happen. So the objective is to get you from a buy signal to a buy mode, and that implies it goes to at least a D. So here we are. We went to a D at 34,000. 342 in the in the Dow. Then we had that Goldman Sachs and Travelers really it just hammered the, uh, the the Dow Industrials. So they fell very sharply. They've come back some. They're holding okay. But what's really interesting is that if you look at the weekly chart, finally we are out of the um, the inside. Call this the inside track repellent zone. It's now propellant zone. But basically it's going sideways. So it's like a consolidation. And you can see that in the S and P. I'll show the same thing here. Uh, the S&P has gone to a leg F, it could be an alternate count, but at least it got, it went from a low bar to peak A, then B, C, D, it's gone E, and then it's, it's stalled at F. So this is very good action, but you can see this 200 period moving average in the daily chart is really very, it's like a magnet, and until the price really pushes sharply away from that, this is going to act like a magnet, so that means that 30,095 is kind of an area that you can expect will be touched over the next couple of days, days even if it bounces a little further. And finally, we're out of the inside track uh, repellent zone in the weekly chart, so that's a positive, but it's still, in a way, it's it's good, but it's still struggling. The QQQ is exactly the same thing. That has gone to a peak F, right at the 200 period moving average. So you can see when I show you the different charts that a lot of the work has been done. It's been a fantastic move from the low of December to this very quick move up in January. Now I think there might be a stalling. And I'm trying to put it together with the Fed. And I, I always like to uh, go back to, and I, I need to check this out, but I think it was General Foods that was in the Dow once upon a time. There were three generals, General Foods, uh, General Electric, and General Motors. And uh, neither of, uh, none of them are in the, in the Dow anymore. But... I remember that there was a period that I got a sell signal and the Dow looked very weak, but there was this one stock that kept holding the market up because it was a takeover rumor and that was it had enough momentum to at least counteract a very sharp move down. I'm thinking here that the Fed at this particular point, this could really be perfect for the Fed because what they keep do doing is that the market moves up off a low. And it goes up substantially enough for them to maybe even talk about whatever they want to if it's negative because they've got they built a base. So you're off the low. And if there is a pullback, it's a pullback that you can you can understand it because you've already had a decent rally. 
So it gives tomorrow it gives the Fed an opportunity to really say what they think and what they want to do. But of course, we know that we, when you're looking at the Fed, they look historically. They aren't allowed to project out. They have to look at the data that's in front of them. And all the data is, by nature, historic. It's, it's a look back. So they're always behind. So I think that this gives them an opportunity. Whatever happens tomorrow, I think what we're looking at is there's enough resistance just on the shorter term to say <clears throat> it's going to take a really strong move to the upside to break away from these levels. But so far, the buy modes that I've been looking at in all these different uh, indices, certainly on the daily charts, are intact. So it gives the, I think it gives the Fed a little bit of room. They've got, they've got a cover now. You've got, you've got a bit of a rally. So if they had to say something negative, I think the market can handle it in the shorter term. So Basil, listen to this. You're going to love this. General Foods was acquired by the Philip Morris companies in 1985. And, oh. and listen to this, this is crazy. In 1989, Philip Morris merged General Foods with Kraft Foods, which it had acquired in 1987 to form Kraft General Foods. The cereal brands of Nabesco, Nabesco were acquired in 1993. And then in 1995, Kraft Thanks. General Foods was reorganized and renamed Kraft. <laughs> but aren't they, aren't they Kraft Heinz now? Didn't they? Get, yeah, that, uh, that's right. They they are. <laughs> so, and I remember I was talking about this the other day, and I said, you know, unlike Larry Pesavento, who remembers the exact minute yeah. thirty or forty years ago that he was with so and so, and he remembers the name of the person. I was freaking. I said it must have been nineteen eighty three or eighty four, if I'm correct about it. Yeah, thank you very much for that information. Pretty wild, but, man. But uh, isn't no, that no. interesting? And and that's interesting because that. In many ways, we're looking at the stocks that are really historic stocks. These are, I mean, every one of the names that you mentioned are names that have been around for a long, long time. Exactly. And they are still, they're still in the market, and they're still very important segments of the market. Yeah, very interesting. So let's just look at crap. Watch this. So this is going to be crazy when you actually look at it. So the revenue of Kraft Heinz now. Look at this. The revenue of Kraft Heinz uh, is 26.3 billion. And when they first started it off, that was a monster number, buying it at $5.6 billion. Is that why? I mean, there's more mergers, that, but that's pretty intense, right? That is really, that's fascinating. It is. So, <laughs> and what, what's very interesting in that whole aspect is that I know people dismiss the Dow. I've used the Dow ever since I began looking at the market decades and decades ago. So I give a daily call on the Dow for my subscribers every day. Uh, but what's really interesting is that the Dow kind of does whatever the market does. And sometimes it's the leader, sometimes it's not. But basically, if everything is going up, they're all going up together. But what we have noticed is that semiconductors, for the very first time, have had a very good move up. But then when you listen to the news, uh, you don't know what's going on in the semiconductor. And then, and then, you know, that's chips. That's like the oil of the 1900s and the 20, 20 hundreds. Oil, chips are like oil. Yeah, I, you know, that whole deal, thinking that it, it's not a commodity, is crazy. Because it is a oh, commodity. Absolutely they is they a always commodity, bid too much, and then they blow it up again. Yeah. Absolutely. Listen, folks, come over to our website at TFNN. Go to newsletters. Go to the opening call. Baz, have a great one, safe one. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. You too. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.